Hello, this is Daniel Ritchie, developer of Howler 9.1. In this version, we've introduced a new GPU accelerated version of the ray tracer, which we call Puppy Ray. Uh, and in this tutorial, I would like to show some of the differences and some of the changes we've made to the renderer. Uh, this is a complete re-implementation of, uh, of the render, the ray tracer. It's not, uh, uh, there, is, there is some similar code, but it is for the most part a re-implementation, so there are a few conceptual differences, a few code differences that would be uh, you, you would like to be aware of. Um, if you go to work with the settings in the program, uh, you'll find that some things behave a little bit differently uh, than they did before. I'm going to actually work in a smaller image because I am, uh, I am on battery power and I'm just going to work on something small. To get her done, as we say in the south. I'm gonna go render something. I'm gonna use. Uh, normally, I could do a city scene. I would use a dread plating, but uh, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna use some fractal noise and the uh, mosaic filter, just to make sort of a grid of boxes. Might adjust their curves a little bit. Oops. Get okay to that. And I'm going to finally go into Puppy Ray now that I have an image. And Puppy Ray GPU version. Should take a moment. I am currently running on an AMD A6 processor. It is a, the one gigahertz version. It has a, I believe, two compute units, uh, GNC core with 128 shaders. So it's a nice little box, but it's a it's a laptop. It's a netbook. <laughs> I do, I do get her, I do enjoy it, it, it uh, very thoroughly, but uh, it's not a high-end gaming machine, but it does play some games nicely. It, uh, I'm going to turn off that in interpolation so that we get these more, these boxes look a little more boxy, uh, and I'm going to put pre-filtering all the way down so the boxes are not round looking as well. So now everything on here should be very sharp edged. Um, I'm gonna, whoops. Move the camera around so we get a better view of what we're looking at here. And, <coughs> I'm gonna turn on global illumination. Now, one thing that has changed in Poppy Ray from the CPU version and even in the CPU version um, Previously when we did global global illumination each ray um, And there's a setting for how many rays that are cast out called GI samples there but each ray that was cast out for this global illumination sample would um, trace all the way through the scene and we found that Objects that are far away really didn't contribute that much to the final um, illumination of a particular point on an object. So we've reduced it to, um, in the CPU version, we've reduced it to, I think, a quarter of the scene. And in the GPU version, it's smaller than that. Um, so that's one change we've made as an optimize. Um, there is a number of other changes to global illumination that have changed. One is that the, uh, the quality of global illumination is now linked with the shadow quality. So if you recall, um, using shadow quality will sometimes using a larger value will be faster, but it'll give you a more blocky looking shadow. Uh, it is the same with global illumination. 
now they are linked although there is a um, min quality clamp if you want to have a very high quality shadow uh, but you still want to have a faster global illumination you can use this min quality uh, to clamp the global illumination to a specific quality while you can change the shadow quality to a higher value um, another thing that has changed in the uh, puppy ray is that um, previously with anti-aliasing you could uh, set a value here anti-aliasing steps and that would actually be a uh, cu uh, cubic uh, or uh, exponential value. Uh, the value you use would be exponential. In other words, if you typed in two or three, or rather, if you typed in three, you would get a grid of uh, three by three passes uh, in anti-aliasing. Um, and if you type in four, you get a grid of four by four. So. Uh, an anti-aliasing step of four would actually take quite a long time to render because um, you were rendering four times four passes. That's uh, 32, I believe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, it's been a long week, anyways. But the, um, a uh, anti-aliasing pass of three or four would give you a high quality. Uh, in Puppy Ray GPU, we switched to stochastic filtering, which allows us to use a um, or stochastic anti-aliasing which allows us to use a more discrete step of anti-aliasing um, which is literal now uh, if you type in two you actually get two anti-aliasing passes um, and the and the uh, the gag with uh, stochastic anti-aliasing is that it spreads the uh, the anti-aliasing out um, on a uh, pixel for pixel level uh, even if you have no anti-aliasing you will get some uh, some for example you get motion blur even with no anti-aliasing uh, because it's able to similar to dithering it is able to spread that out over space instead of using just color blending to uh, to uh, accomplish the uh, the blending on screen it is uh, basically a random sampling um, hence since we are now using this stochastic anti-aliasing we have also added motion blur to the uh, puppy ray version uh, it is motion blur on the camera uh, it is not on some of the other parameters such as uh, height uh, adjusting keyframe the height map and that sort of thing those uh, effects will not be anti-aliasing but we figured that most of the motion in the scene is going to be through the camera being animated so that has been motion blurred and that is on by default you don't have to find a checkbox to uh, enable it um, now as I was saying this anti-aliasing step is now literal so if you type in two you get two passes uh, which is not a lot of anti-aliasing so you might um, if you go to do final rendering you might want to set it up to five or ten or even twenty um, and you can do that now if you had done that in the old version setting it to 20 you would get a very long render time um, and even on the GPU now 20 passes could still take um, several seconds or even even longer um, so be be aware that uh, there is a uh, anti-aliasing bus button you can turn on and off uh, if you want to um, optimize your work uh, while you're making tweaks uh, to other settings and then you can turn that back on to um, make a render to see what your scene looks like anti-aliased um, because remember each time you um, add an anti-aliasing pass you are adding an entire new render uh, and um, it will be a literal doubling uh, if you if you do a uh, anti-aliasing step of two your render time will double if you do a step of three it will triple so be aware of that all right so i've talked about most of the big changes in the rendering um uh you can see that the panel has also been rearranged uh there used to be these move uh size rotation they used to be out on the main part of the panel they've been moved here 
gives you more space um, just to give us a little more room uh, and to allow these uh, these controls here to uh, do the just the work so I'm going to go ahead and close the more panel for now and I will uh, talk about just a few of the small changes that are talked here and I will wrap up so basically we've added one new control here which is camera zoom which will allows you to zoom in and out and we've moved um, the keyframing used to be right beside there uh, we've moved it down you had to used to have a click on a button to bring that down but now it is uh, in plain view where you can see it that's one little small thing we've changed we've made um, some of the settings have changed uh, we no longer have the hours would seem like days uh, because the point uh, with the GPU is to try to ray trace as quickly as possible um, We've uh, moved the interpolation button out here and uh, some of these other things out here have been moved as well. Um, one more thing I'd like to cover before I close is that uh, on the GPU renderer, excuse me, <coughs> oh, sorry, on the GPU renderer, um, we get a time slice of about two seconds uh, before we're kicked off the processor. GPUs uh, so far do not support true multitasking, um, so we basically have to manage that ourselves. Um, the problem with ray tracing is that any one thread can go on for quite a long time. So uh, to reduce the problem, we've split the image into a grid, and here is a drop-down control which lets us, lets us decide which size grid to use. Uh, we're using the default size of 64 by 64 because we're on a modest GPU and we want to make sure we run stable. Um, if any one thread goes over that uh, that two second limit, um, well, bad things happen. And uh, it's just the nature of things until maybe another year from now we will have um, GPUs with true multitasking. So be aware. Um, if you're on a very fast gaming GPU, you can drop this down and maybe even use that highest grid setting and get, you'll get better performance because um, this grid rendering does actually leave a three a few threads uh, sitting idle at times. So a bigger grid will give a uh, higher performance. However, using the smaller grid is safer. So um, it is gonna be entirely depending on your GPU. Um, this program, this implementation is not going to work for every single possible piece of hardware out there. We've done our best with it, um, but we are expecting to run on at least a certain level of performance, a, mach a machine that has a certain level of performance, and um, not every GPU is created equal. Um, some are going to give us really tremendous performance and some aren't. So it's going to take personal experimentation and that is about the gist of it. Um, uh, we are releasing Puppy Ray uh, as of yesterday, so or uh, version nine, which includes Puppy Ray GPU as of yesterday. And I uh, hope you all have already received it. Um, I am <laughs> I am glad to be releasing. It was kind of a a grueling experience, and uh, we really hope we did it. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we did a good job with this one and uh that's about all i have to say for today and uh talk to you later